Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. One of my viewers wanted me to explain why the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man are the lead characters in the Marvel Universe. Now, this viewer watched one of my reviews of the Ripaverse comic, Alpha Core, where I detailed why Spider-Man and Fantastic Four are the lead characters of the Marvel Universe in an effort to debunk a point that Eric July said that no one character would be the lead character of his Ripaverse line of comics. Now, when it comes to storytelling, I disagreed with Eric July because I understand you need to have a lead character to be able to be a guide to the world that you're building. And I showcased this with the example as related to what led to the building of the Marvel Universe that we all know, and that is Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. Now, the entire Marvel Age of Comics actually started in 1961 when timely publisher Martin Goodman wanted to create a superhero comic and wanted to create a superhero comic that would compete with the very popular and top-selling Justice League of America. And that is where Stan Lee, who was thinking about leaving comics altogether, decided to come up with the concept of a superhero family because families were something that were a major part of America at the time. And he came up with the concept of the Fantastic Four and created a story called Fantastic Four Number One. Now, Fantastic Four Number One came out in 1961 and many at Timely didn't expect it to do well, but it turned out to be a huge hit. And Fantastic Four number one laid the foundation for the Marvel Age of Comics, as it was called back then, and was the foundation for everything as related to building the Marvel Universe. Now, the Fantastic Four were the lead characters of the Marvel Universe, in that they were going to be the first family to be the guides to all of us and introducing us to all of the characters in the world of the Marvel Universe. It would be the father, Reed Richards, who would be the one who would help us explore this fantastic world of ordinary people who had extraordinary powers and his love for science would be the thing that would show us a world of all sorts of super powered people. Reed Richards basically is the lead character who leads us into the Marvel Universe and shows us this larger world. It is Reed Richards who is the foundate who is the patriarch of the entire Marvel Universe and he is supported by his, Sue Richards, the Invisible Woman, who was the Invisible Girl at the time, and her brother, Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, who has a name that pays homage to the old Golden Age character of the Human Torch. So they, he, they're also paying his homage to the history of the world that came before it in Timely's Golden Age characters, and the thing pays homage to Marvel's horror comics. So the Fantastic Four is the foundation for everything as related to the entire Marvel Universe, connecting us to Marvel's past with its Golden Age heroes and connecting us to its 50s horror comics and giving us, again, a richer world. So the entire Fantastic Four, they are the lead characters that lead to uh, the foundation of the Marvel Universe and all of the, model, of, the of the foundations for 
all of the types of characters that would be a part of the Marvel Universe. So we would have the superheroes, we would have the horror and supernatural type characters, and we would have the characters as related to the science fiction. All of that is laid out in the Fantastic Four number one, and the Fantastic Four number one as the lead characters of the Fantastic Four go out and fight the Mole Man. Again, another monster character paying homage to Marvel's monster books as the as a villain gives us that foundation of us seeing this, again, world of ordinary people doing extraordinary things and this family staying together and going out to fight these forces and explore this world. Because that's a major core part of the Fantastic Four in them being explorers. They explore this world and give us that sense of wonder and awe. And as they give us this sense of wonder and awe, what that does is get, get us excited about coming into this world. So that's why the Fantastic Four are lead characters as related to the Marvel Universe. Moreover, the Fantastic Four lay the foundation for the story paradigm of the Marvel Universe. They create the story model that all of the other heroes follow with giving us that sense of awe and wonder as related to this fantastic world and give us this sense of we're coming into this fascinating place with all of these extraordinary people. That is a major part of why the Fantastic Four are lead characters. They are our guides into the world that is fantastic, and they show us how a family stays together as, the, as they're dealing with all of these different things and all of these different challenges. It The Fantastic Four basically show us that they are our friends and our guide into this world of the Marvel Universe. Now, as the Fantastic Four laid half of the foundation for the Marvel Universe, Marvel, in 1962, launched another lead character who would become the flagship for Marvel, and this flagship character would be another friend who would take us into the Marvel Universe and really be somebody that kids could relate to because Fantastic Four basically related to young kids as related to having a family there that would be uh, there to give them a foundation of security, but they also wanted a friend to be there for them, and that's where Marvel decided to create the character of Spider-Man, and the character of Spider-Man is another character who is a lead character because, one, he's the flagship character of Marvel and the main face of Marvel, but he's also a flagship character in that he lays the foundation for the Marvel Universe as related to that being a hero who is a character that everybody that builds further builds the world as related to connecting us to the average everyday person on the street. Now the Fantastic Four are the family that deals with everyday life, but Spider-Man is the every average everyday guy on the street, and Spider-Man is the character who leads us into the Marvel Universe and gives us the perspective of the average everyday person in the world of Marvel. Even though he's got superpowers, he's still exploring this world with a sense of awe and wonder, and he's dealing with average everyday problems as related to everyday life. So Spider-Man is also a lead character and that lead character is the one that takes us into the world of the Marvel Universe through the eyes of an average everyday teenager when Peter Parker was young and allows kids to come into the world and have somebody that they believe they can represent like them. I mean, in a way, he's sort of like Robin the Boy Wonder who's at the side of Batman, but he's all by himself. So you've got a kid who is in this world and he's 
in this world with these other heroes. And Spider-Man basically is a character who is a lead character who lets us be able to see the world through the eyes of a teenager. So Spider-Man is a lead character because he was actually the second superhero after the Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four number one came out in 1961. Spider-Man came out in 1962 in the cancelled Amazing Fantasy 15. And after coming out in the cancelled Amazing Fantasy 15, there was a huge demand for Spider-Man. And when we look at the Amazing Spider-Man number one, guess who is in Amazing Spider-Man number one? That's right, the Fantastic Four make an appearance and the Fantastic Four make an appearance because the Fantastic Four are the lead characters in the Marvel Universe and the meeting between Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four was a major one because it allowed both of these lead characters to connect and lay and connect their foundations of the Marvel Universe and lay the foundation for building everything else as related to the world of Marvel superheroes. Now, the world of Marvel superheroes was able to expand because the Fantastic Four created that foundation for the science fiction aspects as related to other characters, with Reed Richards and his cosmic rays getting his stretching powers and giving Sue her invisibility and Johnny Storm his fire powers and giving the thing his rocky appearance. That's what basically allowed Marvel to say, oh, organically we can bring in a character like the Hulk and bring in supernatural heroes like Thor. That allowed them to lay that foundation and then further build that foundation with technological heroes like Iron Man and also go out here and create mutant characters like the X-Men. So that created one aspect of the foundation for further building the world and they could further go out here and further build that world as related to the, again, science fiction aspects because you had Henry Pym with Ant-Man and the Wasp. And with Spider-Man, you could go out here and create an organic foundation for what would be considered the urban heroes like Daredevil. And that, again, is shown to you directly on the cover of Daredevil number one, because on the cover of Daredevil number one, again, they make reference to both Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. And this is why Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four are the lead characters of the Marvel Universe because without Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four, you don't get any of the other characters that come into that world. You don't have that foundation to build the structure for the origins of other characters. You don't have that foundation to build a structure if there's no Fantastic Four for the Hulk, uh, Darede uh, Hulk, Thor, Doctor Strange, and Iron Man, or the X-Men. That all comes from the Fantastic Four. And when it comes to Spider-Man, he is the foundation for the street heroes like Daredevil and Luke Cage and Iron Fist. I mean, it's Spider-Man who was the foundation for that whole story model as related to the street hero or the teen hero. Everything as related to the Marvel Universe comes out of two books, Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four, and they are the lead characters that lay the foundation for basically everything as related to the overall Marvel Universe, and they tie everything to the Golden Age characters that came before them. Because again, you have the homage to the Human Torch, who was a Golden Age hero with Johnny Storm, and that allowed the original Human Torch to be able to organically come into the Marvel Universe. Moreover, it, could, it led to the creation of the Vision. And uh, as related to Captain America, he wouldn't have been able to have an organic way to come into the Marvel Universe as related to the Golden Age and to the Modern Age 
if it wasn't for the Fantastic Four giving us this world where the ordinary could be the extraordinary, and that also led to the building of the world for the Avengers, because Earth's mightiest heroes, they wouldn't have, it wouldn't be a team if it wasn't for the Fantastic Four proving to be successful as Marvel's first family, and with Marvel's first family, we got heroes who were friends in the Avengers, who worked together, so everything came straight out of fa the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man. So when I hear guys like Eric July make the statement, oh, I don't want to have a lead character, I know that he really, that shows he has no real craft as related to the skill of writing and world building as related to building a universe because universes are built on lead characters and lead characters provide us with guidance to be able to navigate that world and have a friend that would show us that world and show us everything that's so fascinating about it. I mean, when you look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that Marvel Cinematic Universe was founded with a lead character in Tony Stark, and Tony Stark was the guy who gave us guidance into that world. He was our friend who gave us a way to see that world and see how everything was just fantastic and fascinating. And what happened with the Marvel Cinematic Universe to make it fall apart was that we started to see Tony Stark having fear as related to it, as related to have his, being overwhelmed with Iron Man 3. And that led to all of the decisions with Age of Ultron and Infinity War. And what happened was Marvel Studios killed off Tony Stark, and without anybody there to give us guidance into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that's why that universe wound up falling completely apart. Because, again, lead characters are the characters who are the readers and the viewers, friends. They allow us to be able to have a friend to show us what's about this world and show us what's great about this world as they explore this world. That's why the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man were so important because the Fantastic Four were adventurers. Spider-Man was a kid who was wanting to learn more about everyday life and as he was growing up in this world, he allowed us to be able to grow up with him in that world. So both of these character, these series sets of characters, they were essential to the building of the Marvel Universe, and that's what I learned just, again, reading comics for the le ever since I was four years old, and I saw this presented to me in Origins of Marvel Comics, and this is something that is important as related to writing. You have, if you're building a universe of characters, you have to have lead characters because the lead character's job is to be the reader's friend that allows us to enter this world that is big and scary and allows us to have somebody to show us that he, they have the courage to be able to enter this world and not be afraid and show us that nothing here is scary. That is the job of a lead character to show us this world and show us that, hey, you, this world is filled with fantastic characters, but we're, he's, we're not afraid. And since we're not afraid, we can explore the world that's going to be shown to us in the stories that are presented. That is the job of a lead character. A lead character is our friend. They are the hero of the story because they have the courage to overcome in the face of adversity as related to the challenges of that world. That's what the job of a lead character is. And a lead character shows us that the challenges in this story are not scary. So a lead character is essential to storytelling. A lead character is a major part of storytelling. That's what I have learned, again, from my over 30 years as a comic fan and have learned as I've learned to the craft of writing. Now, when I built the SJS Direct Universe, I started with two characters. I started with Isis and John Haynes. 
and I started when I published ISIS in 2002 to lay the foundation for the SJS Direct Universe as related to the spiritual and supernatural and mythical aspects of that world as related to gods and the uh, cr um, creatures of the night and other supernatural characters. That's what I did with the Isis character in showing her as being a part of the new Heliopolitans. And I also did it with her villain esteem at the time, showing the dark side of that in contrast and showing that she was a part of this family. And as she was learning and getting to know about her family, she was going to be a guide to this world, a kind of girl next door who was going to learn more about this family and learn more about this family that she was a part of and a and the destiny she was supposed to achieve now after i established isis in 2002 in 2005 i came up with a concept for john haynes and john haynes is another part of that supernatural world of mythological and spiritual characters and a part of a part of further establishing that world in a more more modern and contemporary part of it in being the friend who was going to show us that these supernatural and mythical beings are nothing to be scared of i mean with the john hayes character what i try to show is that this common ordinary man is in the presence of these gods demons and monsters and he's basically seeing them as a friend and as he sees them as a friend we don't get scared of these beings that we are that are considered to be extremely powerful and he's basically showing us that this world of beings that are considered to be incredibly powerful are nothing to be scared of and that's the whole point of a lead character a lead character is one that allows us to come into these fantasy worlds uh, where we're, where people want to escape and feel safe and comfortable in that world. That's what a lead character's job is to do. And when a writer understands how to build a universe, they understand that the lead character is important and lead characters build worlds so when you have a story what you want to do when you want to build a universe of characters like the marvel universe or the dc universe you do need these characters to be our friends like in dc you have superman batman and wonder woman who again are our friends and that's why you ha need lead characters because lead characters do three things they show us they are the main characters they show us what they want to do in showing us a larger picture of that world and they allow us to care because they are our friends and we form connections with these people that are as close as family and that's why they are important because they become like our friends and family that's why people form connections with these characters and become a part of fandoms they become a part of fandoms because these are our friends and we want to spend time with those friends to the point where we want to spend money every month with comics and every year with SJS Direct Universe books to spend time with our friends. So that's why these characters are important and that's why the Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four were important because the Fantastic Four, again, they were the foundation for the Marvel Universe as related to being the first family of Marvel and Spider-Man is the flagship face of Marvel. So whenever you think about what's important as related to Marvel, understand that the lead characters are Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. Yes, there are characters that are popular like Iron Man, X-Men, the Hulk, and all of those characters, but we wouldn't have a Marvel Universe without Spider-Man or the Fantastic Four. Now, I hope this explains everything to the viewer who requested this video. And if you want to request a video about comics, science fiction, and fantasy, 
you can send a donation to the Cash App by clicking the link in the description box. Or if you want to donate through PayPal, you can send a donation through PayPal by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of the action-packed fantasy of the SJS Direct Universe, like the Isis series, the Steam series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my Black Sorority novel, The Thetas, or my vampire novel, Eternal Night, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble. And that's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available on Lulu, John Haynes at Death's Door. The man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the first John Haynes comic at Lulu.com today. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.